posting your relationship woes on Reddit is a magnet for just break up with him, sis. So this woman posted in the Am I Overreacting subreddit. She says, Am I overreacting to dump my fiance over a birthday cake? So I want you guys to weigh in on this. So she's 30. She just turned 30 and he's 32. So this is what she says. My, uh, me and my fiance have been together for a little over two years, engaged for one year and a couple of months. I recently turned 30 about a month ago and it was a big deal to me. I told him as much and I knew exactly how I wanted to celebrate. I requested a specific restaurant because it has a beautiful view, a gift I wanted and a birthday cake. Typically, we take each other out for our birthdays and get gifts, but the request for a cake was new. The restaurant is not extravagant, around $20 per entree. The gift was Jelly Cat, around $35, no cake the day of. I had sent him an iPhone note detailing what I wanted because I'm the sort of person who thinks if you don't ask for it, you won't get it, and I knew specifically what I wanted. Sometimes I don't, and he surprises me with things and does a great job. The note had a video of the sort of cake I wanted, inspired by the movie 13 Going Gone 30, and I wanted a specific filling. It's been over a month since my birthday, and I have shared with him how disappointed I was that he didn't get me the cake. I asked if he intended to make it up to me, and he said he did. That day was yesterday. We picked it up and I was excited and I thanked him, even though the top of the cake didn't say what I wanted. I wanted it to say 30, flirty and thriving, which references the movie 13 going on 30. And instead it said, welcome to level 30. I didn't say anything about that and I still have it. And we dropped the cake off at his house and had our date. We, when we picked it up later for me to take it home, he wanted to tell me what the feeling was. I told him I knew what it was because I had requested it in the note. His face sort of drops and he repeats what feeling I request and goes, I messed up. I start laughing because I'm assuming he's kidding. It was in the note in black and white. How could he have spent good money on a cake and not got the right feeling and messed up what it said? Well, he wasn't kidding and the cake was wrong. I felt extremely hurt and left without talking to him. He since texted me saying he'll make it up to me and fix it, but this was the fix because he originally didn't get it for me. Obviously, this isn't our first big fight, but I don't want to drone on. Am I overreacting to dump him for this, or is this genuinely a, a careless mistake? If he makes it up, should I look forward to this? I'm sorry, I, I just look forward, or will this be a life of him ignoring things when I expressly spell out what I need? She says, edit, thank you guys for all the advice, truly. As stated in my post, this isn't the first nor biggest disagreement we've had, but it was indeed the problem at hand, albeit seen as a childish one. Some of you also seem to think I'm like this all the time, a bit silly. I'm not. This was a one-off request. My fiance is also neurodivergent and says things are easier when I spell them out versus him trying on his own blindly. All that said, I do know this instance was, is just a cake, one I would be happy to buy myself. He knew it was important. It was an important milestone birthday and wanted details, so I gave them. I didn't send a list of requests out of the blue. I let him know I had a few specifics in mind and he wanted to know what they were. He agreed. After reading all your advice, I do think I'm overreacting to dump him and just need to let him know the rare times I ask for something specific or special, I want him to follow through because it's important to me. I hope some, I hope some of you that seem to think me asking for a small cake that would feed about four to five people is extravagant Get that and more from your own partners so you can see it's lovely to get spoiled once in a while. On the one hand, sometimes women get, you know, men aren't mind readers. And then on the other hand, when you spell things out, like with post-it notes, with bullet points and everything, and they still get it wrong, you're supposed to just be like, oh, you know, he just made a mistake. At what point are men supposed to just be able to follow instruction? At least 
if he had these instructions and they were as detailed as she said, all he literally had to do was put the list in front of the baker's face. Like, why is this hard? You keep in mind, these are the most logical leaders. These are the big brain leaders of the world. That's what they are. That's how they build themselves. They are the ones that built the world and then they work on oil rigs and all of that stuff. That's just what they do. <laughs> but a person can't look at direct, not even bake a cake, just give the directions to the baker. <laughs> and he can't pull this off. And I'm not just running out and saying that you need to break up with somebody because of this. I'm not going to do that. But is this what is truly to come? I have no idea because I would think that a specific list makes things just that much easier. And you don't, it just takes the guesswork out of it. And I'm sure people are in the, um, the comment section trying to downplay this woman's emotions. This is obviously a milestone birthday for her. He knew it. She knew it. Y'all know it. But I'm sure y'all are, these people are in the comments trying to make it like she's the problem. I honestly hadn't read any of the comments. So let's read a few of them together. Chronically Curious says, I think if you are ready to throw in the towel because of a birthday cake, there's a lot more issues going on than you really want to admit. I think the cake is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, it's time to dump him. Foolish Pleasure says exactly. It's not about the cake. Cultural Honeydew says, as one of my brilliant friends used to say, it's never about what it's about. <laughs> All right. Um, this person says, love it. Um, this person says, the issue is, isn't the issue. Coffee Needed right now says, is this just a symptom of bigger issues? Does he disregard your wishes often? And she says, that's actually a very good point. I'd have to consider it more. We've had problems before, obviously, that were bigger than this. But I do think he does try to. A Romantic Diamond says, my ex-husband was undiagnosed neurodivergent. His deduction, not mine. He would often get me things I didn't like or need and not the things I'd specifically asked for or voiced were my favorite things. But I noticed how he was very meticulous about the things that mattered to him, though, making post-it notes, alarms, sending emails to himself, putting things in the calendar. He remembered the things he wanted to remember. In the beginning, he was different. He did all the cute stuff, cards, letters, buying my favorite style of jewelry without me having to ask. He finally admitted um, one day that since we were together, in his mind, those things weren't necessary any longer. We're divorced now. People treat you how they feel about you. What they do now, will they will continue to do or not do when you're married. Um, she says, I overheard a man talking on the phone the other day and he said, yeah, I told him that's your girl now. You don't have to do the stuff no more. You got her. <laughs> These men giving other men advice is pretty terrible. It is going to help them stay in a state of singlehood. If I mean, maybe that's what they want. OMG, it said, he says, this comment is the best way I've seen it laid out. I'm odd DHD. So I refuse to take scraps from another neurodivergent person when I know how to treat people I love and who love me back. You treat them as if they're important to you. You treat them like you want to be treated. I'm not too picky, but if I actually take the time to lay them out, then you know this is a situation where specifics actually matter to me. On top of that, don't ask me for specifics and then ignore said specifics. Neurodivergence isn't an excuse. I get the treatment for me. That's the meds and therapy and a variety of organizational tips. I need to better support the way I treat relationships that matter. Examples, birthdays in my phone calendar with excessive reminders, notes app filled with bits and pieces of info, friends found significant, buying presents as soon as I see them, remember to, and keeping them in a gift nook so I can um, compile them into gift bags when the time mat um, arrives, when the time arrives months later. See, people can create things. People can do things when they want to do things. That whole neurodivergence is an excuse because if these people can do what they want to do for themselves, they can do what they can do for other people. Anyways, I would like to know, do you think she's overreacting? Jump in the comments. Let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So this is an Am I the A-hole post from a few days ago. 
and there is an update. So this is from a woman, and y'all know what I say about women posting in the Am I the A-hole thread. They just want validation for feeling normal human emotions. She says, am I the a-hole for leaving my boyfriend because he bought his female best friend lingerie as a joke? Already know you're not an a-hole, but let's get into it. My boyfriend, a 28-year-old man, and I, 24-year-old woman, have been together for a year and a half. I love him a lot, and he has been pretty amazing to me. He is also the sort of person who has lots of friends, and his close friends are pretty much family. He also loves to joke and play these harmless pranks on his friends, which sometimes makes me feel weird. Just for context, he has two female friends and three male friends. This is about my boyfriend and one of his friends, Claire, who's 28. Claire is a nice woman and we are friendly. My boyfriend also has never ignored me in favor of his friends or talked over me in front of them, which is why I don't want understand if I'm in the right. They... My boyfriend's friends had a recently escalated prank fight. I had made it clear to my boyfriend that I'm not good at jokes and I'm rather stiff. And he said he would keep me out of it. Claire, my boyfriend, and another friend, Kyle, 27-year-old man, even had a huge um, throwing water balloons fight in Kyle's backyard. Then my boyfriend got pranked with dye in his body wash. Then Kyle pranked Claire something about whipped cream and oven mitts, but the issue was when my boyfriend bought a red lacy lingerie set when he plan and he planned to put it in Claire's room the next time he went over. I said it was a tacky prank, and why would he buy lingerie? None of the previous pranks have been of this kind, and it makes me really uncomfortable. I also felt like if I was Claire, I would feel gross about it, but my boyfriend got mad and defensive and told me Claire is cool like that and she would think it's funny. I admit I get a bit weirded out when he calls Claire extremely beautiful and jokes about how she um, was always, has always been out of his league. But I thought it was nothing and they were like family, so I guess it was their thing. However, lingerie, the lingerie prank had me put my foot down and I said that he was wrong to give another woman lingerie, no matter who, when he had a girlfriend. And is this the kind of thing you give family? I have family. No family of mine has ever given me lingerie. That's just me. You guys answer in the comments. Has any of your family members that are the opposite sex given you lingerie? She continues with, we fought and I said I wanted to break up which he didn't want to, and I said um, and I said that I was just overreacting. He said that I was too conservative and needed to open my mind when he had never given me a reason to be insecure. Claire called me and said that she and my boyfriend has have been friends for a long time, and inside jokes are just that, and I'll learn more with age. I still feel weird about this. My best friend is supportive of me no matter what I do, but I have started to feel like I'm blowing this out of proportion. My boyfriend says that the fact that he told me and didn't hide it from me shows that I'm the problem. I have started to feel like I've blown this out of proportion and maybe it's my fault. I can't take a joke. I really feel awful about this whole thing. Am I the a-hole? She says, edit. The people asking what the prank is with the lingerie. Apparently, it's an inside joke about how during their college days, she had some problems with the color red and the lingerie would just have given her a shock of some kind, I guess. I told my boyfriend it was cruel, but he said it wasn't a trauma thing, just an inside joke. Claire also said over the phone that the lingerie thing was an inside joke of their college days. Um, I don't know. I would feel uncomfortable if my man gave another woman lingerie too. So I don't think that she is out of line to find this inappropriate. I'm not going to do many of the comments because there is a an update and I want to get to it, but I will read this one. Lexi Mo says, not the a-hole. You aren't blowing this out of proportion. How was buying lingerie and putting it in someone's room a prank? You'll learn with age. There's a four-year difference between you and Claire. Does she think in four years you'll somehow think buying lingerie is acceptable and somehow can be considered a prank? Girl, I'm in my 40s, and I can tell you right now that that would never be an acceptable inside joke or prank. And you telling your boyfriend you, I'm, I'm sorry, and your boyfriend telling you you're the problem because he didn't hide it from you is just plain trying to manipulate or gaslight you. 
Absolutely. I agree. I am also in my 40s and I completely agree with Leximo. So here's the update. She says, my inbox got flooded with DMs and had to turn off the Reddit notifications. When I posted this, I was ready to be called immature and ridiculous and get a couple of comments, but it seems like the post blew up and the comments were kind of eye-opening. To be honest, before all this fiasco, my boyfriend has always been nice to me, came with me to my grad school functions, even though he found them very boring, but it would, but would do so so that I could network. He builds stuff like furniture and helps me out with handiwork all the time. He's also very funny, and at the very beginning, I thought all of his jokes were funny, and I sometimes wonder why he wanted to be with me. Plus, I was always busy with school and job interviews. His mom and I had even gotten close and she has been saying how happy she was that we were together. I had always ignored his and Claire's weird dynamic because I told myself I was being insecure. I have male friends too. And I thought that just because we aren't like that doesn't mean my boyfriend and Claire can't be close. Claire has also never been outright mean to me. She was just aloof. And I thought it was because I was new to the group. To the actual update, my boyfriend and I broke up. I'm sorry, guys, but even after seeing so many replies on how he was cheating, I refuse to believe it. I'm still in love with this guy, and he called me like half a day after I wrote this post and asked to meet. I met him, and he said he understood where I was coming from, but I, I was always too uptight to understand that friendship is friendship. He and Claire had known each other for years before I came into the picture, and I cannot expect him to just ruin their dynamic. I asked him what sort of dynamic was red lingerie, why he couldn't, why couldn't it um, be literally any other type of clothing? And he told me it had, it had, sorry, he told me he had it with my insecurities and that he and Claire talked and apparently I was making them sound like cheaters and homewreckers and that he thought it was better if I find someone like me who thought the idea of fun, of a fun, fun night was junk food in a, a movie indoors. Dang, he, he definitely hurt her feelings with that. She says that hurt a lot. He had always known I had insecurities about being called boring. He has always complimented me on how his weaknesses were my strengths. Now he says things like this to me. Also, before this lingerie fiasco, I had never said a word about his and Claire's friendship. I always supported his pranks and practical jokes, no matter my opinions on them, because I thought it was his business what he did with his hobbies. And he leaves without even putting up a fight because his girlfriend didn't want him giving lingerie to the woman he constantly refers to as his sexy bestie. Claire didn't call or text after the breakup either, but Kyle did and said that he was sad that we broke up and he hoped I would be okay in the future. I asked him if my boyfriend ever cheated on me. He said that my boyfriend had been only, had only been a one-woman man when he was dating me, but he could understand that some women can't handle female best friends, especially if they look like Claire. I told him to F off and blocked him. It felt like he only wanted to gloat and hurt me because my boyfriend left. I feel like I never knew these people. Claire and Kyle were always at least um, at least decent to me, if not nice. Did it make me a free target now that my boyfriend has been telling them, telling his friends, I'm an insecure child? I don't know what to do now. I've been told repeatedly by both my friends and sister that I dodged a bullet but I have been breaking down like a kid again and again. I'm even thinking of going to therapy after feeling the most insecure I felt my whole life. Thank you to all who were supportive. It seems like my now ex-boyfriend just did the work for me. You're 24 years old. You're 24. <laughs> you are growing into your career. You just graduated school. You will be fine. Um, what we do in our 20s and how we grow into our 30s and 40s, you'll be fine. You'll find someone. And if jokes are not your thing, this is not going to be the person for you because after a while, the pranks will turn to including you in the pranks and jokes. And then you will be the butt of the joke when you're not laughing and his friends are laughing at you, not with you. Anyways, you guys go ahead and jump in to the comments. I'm not doing a bunch of comments since I did the post and the update. And obviously, this has been long. Like, comment, and share. So this screenshot was posted in my Bourbon Bougie subreddit. And she captioned it, woman upset about other women's standards. So this is a woman speaking. She says, so let me get this straight. Y'all want a man to pay all the bills 
take you on vacation at least three times a year, completely on him. Pay for your hair, nails, and lashes, and you want him to give you just because gifts randomly. You also want him to spend time with you and take you on dates in between. Where the F y'all come up with these with this unrealistic A B S? The internet? I'm so glad I'm not a man, cause whoo, baby, y'all hard on them. Now, I don't know why this Pikmisha is doing this, because obviously she should know that not all of us are saying these things. And even if we are even if women are all saying these things. If women have a set of standards and requirements and they state them, that is their business. If they do not find a man that can match up to that, that is their business as well. It doesn't impact this woman at all to for another woman to have some standards. Just like there could be a job posting that has some unrealistic um, standards or expectations. It could be some really crazy expectations. And another company could have some expectations that are more rational. Now, if these people never go to the job with the unrealistic expectations, then that job will have to bring them down two to three notches if they actually want some employees there. Same with these women. If they want this and they state it, and they are willing to go without it and be single, then that is perfectly fine. What what another woman's standards are don't impact my life. Another woman could have the requirement of going to Hawaii once a year and that be her standard. That doesn't impact me at all because if she goes or not, my life is the exact same. So if these women want to have these standards, let them have them. It doesn't impact you. If you are the person that doesn't have these standards, There should be more people to pick you. There should be more people available to pick you. So these women having outstanding or extraordinary or unrealistic standards should help you in being picked. They really should. All right, let's see what some of the comments under the post were, even though I said this is the Bourbon Bougie subreddit. So I'm sure most of the women are going to feel like me. (laughs) So here's the complete caption. So some woman on my Facebook page posted this. What's your opinion on why other women's standards angers women like this so much? My opinion is, if you're happy with your life, other people's lives wouldn't bother you. Maybe she wants this from her husband but can't get it. I don't know. Also, who's to say the average woman even wants all that from a man? I don't know. Awkward Environment says she's probably the sole income and pays for everything for her man. And 4B Forever says, or a boy mom. Traditional Curve says she's definitely, she definitely is warehousing a man who cheats on her repeatedly, not warehousing. This is the only outlet for her rage. Her pick me tendencies or low self-esteem won't allow her to admit she's in a ridiculous situation with a man who doesn't like her. Awesome Possum says we accept the love we think we deserve. Red Fem Scientist says, I don't see what her problem here since I'm sorry, she says, I don't see what is her problem here since there are guys who are happily willing to provide that. Just say you don't qualify for this type of man and go. Moonlight on Rosa says, it's possible that this is an I'm not like the other girls thing. She's not actually talking to other women. She wants men to see that she's better because she's not as materialistic, et cetera. I completely agree with that assessment. I'm going to end with this one. Creepy Night says, I'm proud to be a gold digger and use Martha Stewart Stewart saying, I love being pampered. And HPA says, I'm with you, Martha. And Adventurous says, I always say this and I don't give an F. I have my own, but if you come into my life, you have to do, um, you have to do the needful or get lost. I don't know what the needful is, but you better do it. Or like she said, get lost. Okay, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. What What is your opinion on women who have an issue with other women having standards? Let me know. Jump in the comments. Okay, so this woman posted in the relationship subreddit, and she basically admitted that she has a pest that wants to nest and rest. She's 33. He's 46. He is definitely a pest that wants to nest and rest. She says, my boyfriend won't let me end things with him. He is 46 and he has thoroughly burrowed into her for her resources. 
Okay, so she says, my boyfriend won't let me in things with him. So there are really obvious problems like me being the only one contributing any money. I pay the rent. I pay for food. I, I pay to get his truck back after it was repossessed. He is working hard and getting back on his feet with IT, but that doesn't change that I paid for everything to the point where I don't have savings anymore. For eight full months, I've been paying for everything. And that paragraph right there is the reason why she should not be in a relationship with somebody until she gets a sense of survival because she spent her savings on a parasite. But let's continue because this is longer. I work as a nurse and the requirement is three 12 hour shifts a week. Last week I worked six. I'm not complaining. I love working, being away from him, LOL, but it shouldn't be. And I need to rebuild my savings account. Sex. I dread sex with him. I avoid it. This is why he hates when I work so much, because there's less sex. He says it's not about sex, but intimacy that um, we miss out on. But we all know it's sex. I do not find him appealing. Okay, so she spends all this money on this person who has no money, who isn't on their feet, and she's not even finding this man appealing. I am wondering what she sees in him. Maybe it'll get better. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. <laughs> I have borderline personality dis disorder and he uses this against me by not letting me break up with him. He treats fights as episodes and doesn't take it seriously when I ask him to leave because I haven't always been in the past, but this time I'm really done. I'm not happy and we've been dating eight months and we've known each other for 10 months before that. We have given this enough time to figure out if it's worth it and for me, I'm getting the short end of the stick. We talked with each other face to face for one full hour today about some problems. And I told him I needed a, a break because holy sh is my day off and I needed an ounce of time to myself. He flipped. Problem is he lives with me. I'm the only one on the lease. I'm paying. I'm the only one paying, but I can't get him to leave unless I get the police involved. What do I do? You call the police. It was just, you just said it. You call the police. You don't want him to be there anymore. You want to extract him. You you just call the police. It's easy. You just call it. <laughs> <sighs> this woman is a walking red flag to herself. She is an a-hole to herself. She has this person, uh, this, this homosexual is implanted into her couch and doesn't want to leave because she is providing food and Wi-Fi and a couch and he's comfortable. Periodically, he gets a little nooky. I mean, what is the downside for him being there? And I'm trying to figure out what any positive is there that she is like, what is she getting from him? What is she getting from him? She doesn't want Nookie from him and she pays all his bills and he's not a very good steward of their money. And she's not a good steward of her own money because she has allowed him um, to stay this long and she just keeps paying and now she has no savings. She has no time for herself because she has to go to work more than double so that she can rebuild her savings. Ladies, get some sense about yourself. Get a sense of survival. This is not, this is not healthy and you cannot keep this up long-term and you should not be supporting a homosexual. You should just not. And that's hobo with a B. That's okay. Just extricate them, pull them off, put them out and let them figure it out. Let them figure it out. He's over 40. No, absolutely not. Stop doing that. You know, at first I wasn't going to get into the comments, but somebody might be having an issue or not understand that these um that these pests may know the tenant's rights and they may know that if you get a piece of mail there or you stay for a length of time that there is an eviction process. So you need to know and understand this. I was just going to end it there because I was a little frustrated, but I decided to come back to the comments just in case some people needed to know these things. If you let one of these pests burrow into your couch or into your neck and start sucking your resources. Sometimes they know that if they get a, a piece of mail or the length of time that they are in your place, that they are an established resident and you actually have to evict them legally. So please do not let these people stay longer. Don't let them get comfortable. Don't let them get a piece of mail. If they get a piece of mail, you need to write return to sender and send it back. Okay, so Ecosia says, uh, you get the police involved after you have given him the legally required amount of notice because almost everywhere he is a legal resident, regardless of the lease. 
put it in writing, wait. Then if he still doesn't leave, you take it further. A breakup is not an argument, OP. You don't need a reason to con a reason with him or convince him. You need to take legal action to get him out of your home. What other recourse do you think there is? This man is using you and manipulating you and he knows it. There's no reality where you politely ask him to leave and he goes. Stop trying to reason with him and just take action. The OP says, do I need to give him notice if he never got mail with this address here? How do I prove I gave him notice? And this person said, you film yourself handing it to him. And version says, if he never got mail from there, then this isn't even proof he can show to prove himself a tenant. Laws vary state to state and country to country. It would be useful for you to research your rights and his wherever you are. Also, it wouldn't hurt for you to get a free consultation from an attorney in your area that specializes in tenant laws. This closing Nina says the Internet can explain the ev eviction process in your state, but every state is different. Hike Hike Baby says your country or state probably have a different DV hotline and they can give you advice on how to get him to leave. An ex-boyfriend who won't take no for an answer or move out of your apartment is dangerous. And I don't think they would be um, be this. I think they are saying um, they don't think this would be a waste of time. Also, when someone is afraid of their partner and dreads sex with them, it usually feels like they can't say no. There, there's usually a reason. OK, so she's just basically saying call the DV hotline. And so I'm just putting these comments out there just because simply you need to know and understand your laws, your rights in these areas, and do not let people overstay their welcome because then it could be a process in getting them out. I didn't see any palate cleansers as I scrolled Reddit this morning, so I'm going to just add this coffee post. Are you a coffee drinker or are you a tea drinker? That is the question of the day. Are you a coffee drinker? Or are you a tea drinker? Or are you just like, just give me water and, you know, sunshine and I'm ready to go. I myself, team coffee, team coffee all the way. I get my coffee and I'm smiling like this, 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 or this. Any of these smiles is typically me after I have my coffee. <laughs> All right, you guys go ahead and weigh in. Which, are you a coffee drinker? Are you a tea drinker? You guys weigh in. Don't forget to like, comment, share.